let's solve this confidence interval problem. So a researcher is interested in estimating the startup cost to run a candy store in a district. The population standard deviation is $30,000. Suppose 10 candy stores are randomly selected and the average startup cost is $200,000. Answer the following question. The first thing that I would like you to do is set up, construct a 95% confidence interval. So this is definitely not a data problem, right? So the previous problem was a data problem. So this one, they gave you all the stats that you need. So first of all, we know Sigma. So Sigma is $30,000. So since you know Sigma, then this is the Z problem. And then the sample size is 10. The sample mean is 200. And then we have that confidence interval formula. So first you go to stat and then you go to test. Where is the Z interval? Line number seven is Z interval. So this one, we are going to select the stats option because we already know all the stats. So the sigma, sigma is equals to 30. So you clean up the 25 and then you put a 30. The sample mean is equals to 200 and then the N is equals to 10. And then the confidence level, they want you to do a 0 0.95. So that is a 95% confidence interval. And then in your graphing calculator, you can click calculate. So once you hit calculate, they gave you the lower limit and the upper limit, right? So in this problem, the lower limit, I would like to use a, um, I would like to use one decimal place. So the lower limit is 181.4. The upper limit is 218.6. So the units are $1,000. So what does that mean? That means we are 95% confident. So we are 95% confident. that the true average startup cost, true average, what is true average? True average means the mu. So what we are trying to say is the mu is between 181.4 and 218.6. I am sure I'm, I'm, I say this with a 95% confidence. So the true average startup cost, startup cost to run a candy store in that city. Oh, I use this trick and city. You, you, you know what, what, what that means. In that uh, city falls between 181.4 and to 18.6 thousand dollars. Using simple language, we are trying to say that the mu falls between 181.4 and to 18.6 thousand dollars. All right, so that is my 95% confidence interval. I know it is just that easy. You press a few keys to get the answer, but sometimes when you do your homework online or on paper, the question will last. We would like to ask you to break everything into little steps. So usually they will ask you to show the the formula plug in the numbers too. So then you have to write a 200 plus or minus the Z. We don't know the Z yet. And then times sigma divided by the square root of N. So how do you find the Z? So this is a 95% confidence interval, right? So the C level is 95. Then you take 100% minus 95% divided by two. So you still have a um, you have a five. You have you still have a five percent. Five percent divided by two. You so you still have um half of five percent, and then half of five percent on the left, and then half of five percent on the right. Right. So you have that divided by two. You have zero point zero twenty five, and then they will give you a graph, or they would like to. They will just ask you to sketch your own graph. So here is your graph. So you have ninety five percent in the middle, and then two point five on the right and then 2.5 on the left, which is half of 5%, and then this will be your Z. And then what about alpha? What is alpha? Uh, 1 minus 0 0.95 equals to 0 0.05. That is your alpha. Alpha means the remaining area. Okay, and then to find the Z, so you have to use inverse normal distribution. I explained that uh, when we were doing the central limit theorem and the normal distribution, I have videos for that in in, in the playlist or in my channel, you can check check it out. So inverse norm, 
we have um, 5%, 0 0.05 divided by 2, and then the mean is 0, the standard deviation is 1. I prefer to write the 5% the divided by 2 because that reminds me I am doing a confidence interval problem. So you go to your inverse norm, second verse, and then you go to your inverse norm, and then you type this 5% divided by 2, divided by 2 is not it's not a lot of hassle, easy to do, 5% divided by 2, the mean is 0, standard deviation is 1, we use 0 and 1 because z means standard normal, so that is equals to 1.960, you don't need to take care of the plus or minus because the plus or minus is built in in the formula. So sometimes they would like to ask you to do such plug-in, and then other than that, they would like to ask you to get the margin of error, so this one, the margin of error, or some textbook they call this error bound. That is easy. All you have to do is you take 1 1.960, 1 1.960, you multiply the top, and then you divide it by the square root of 10. So that gives you the margin of error, 18.5, 18.594, or you keep one decimal place, you do 18.6, and then to calculate the, curve, the lower limit and upper limit, you take a 218, you take a 200, the x bar, plus or minus 18.6. So that gives you the upper limit and the lower limit, all right? So that is the end of part A, and then in part B, they ask you to construct a 80% confidence interval. So 80%. So 80%, uh, let's use a different color for part B. So 80% confidence interval. Let's go do that right now. We go to step. And then we go to test. We do a Z interval. Uh, we don't need to change any stats. All you have to do is change the C level to 0 0.80. The C level to 0 0.80. And then you calculate that. So that gives you 80% CI. That gives you 187.8. And then 212.2, right? So they are all in thousand dollars. What about the plug-in? So the plug-in, you do the same thing. So you the x bar is equals to 200. The only difference is you have to give me another z because uh, you change the z level, then you have to you have a different z value. The sigma, the sigma is always 30. The standard deviation, the, the n is always 10. And then regarding this 80%, so for the 80%, you have 80% uh, right in the middle. So the middle is 80%. And then you have a Z, you have a Z, right? So other than that, the alpha, that will be 20%. And then you have 10% on the left and then 10% on the right. So alpha is equals to 20%, right? Alpha is the remaining area. And then for the Z, that is equals to inverse norm. See, 20% uh, divided by 2. So it's 20 divided by 2 and then 0 and 1. Let's see what that equals to. So second verse and then inverse norm, you have a 0 0.20 divided by 2. I prefer to type the divided by 2 other than the, instead of the 10% because that reminds me I am doing confidence interval. 0 and 1, they are standard normal. So that's why we have 0 and 1. So we have negative 1 point. Oh, actually, we don't need to worry about the negative. Just write the number 1.281. So 1.282, so this will be 1.282. So that's how I got this number. So which one has a longer interval? So for the 80%, what's the length? So the length is equal to 12.2 minus 187.8. And then for the 95%, uh, we have our 218.6. We have 218.6 minus 181.4. So 181.4, you can quickly calculate that on your calculator. So 212.2 minus 187.8. 
that is equal to 24.4 and then this one is 218.6 minus 181.4 that is equals to 37.2 so of course the 95% is longer and then the 80% is shorter what is the reason the reason is you have to compare the z so for that for the purple one the 80% what is my z my z is 1.282 what about my uh, 95%? My 95% is 1.960. So that is 1.960. So the idea is you have a longer, you have, um, you have a higher confidence level, so C level, then you have a bigger Z, and then you have a bigger margin of error, then you have a longer interval. For a lower Z level, so if you have a lower confidence level, then you have a smaller Z, and then you have a smaller margin of error, so therefore you have a shorter interval. So if you also want a picture for the comparison, so I can quickly draw a picture for you. So this one, but a picture, I'm going to write a lot on this picture, so it might be hard to see. So first of all, I want to compare the 80% and 95%, so the purple is 80%. 80%, so let's put the 80% right there, and then use a different color for the 95, so this will be a 95%, right? So this plus that, you have a 95%. Okay, and then this is a Z, this is a Z, and then compare to the purple Z. So what is the purple Z equals to? The purple Z is 1.282. So this is 1.282. What about the 95%? The 95% is 1.960. This is a 1.960 because look at the green. So this is 95%, right? So this is equals to 95%. 95%, there are more area in the center. So that push the Z farther away to the right. So if you take a Z that is farther away from the right, so this Z must be greater than the Z that is that one that is closer to the center. So the more off you go to the right the bigger z's you have so if you change that to a 99 percent so maybe the 99 percent ends right here so that gives you an even bigger z so that's why if you raise the z level you have a bigger margin of error as a result you have a longer interval it's because you one more interval, capture the true mean, right? So you need a longer interval to do the job. If you have a lower confidence level, you don't need that many interval to capture the true mean, so the shorter interval will be fine. And then in part C, I want you to construct a, another 95% confidence interval, but you change the sample size to 100. So you change the sample size to 100 for part C. Okay, so let's do that. We go to step. Let's clean this up. We go to stat and then we go to a Z interval. And then what I have to do is change the 10 to 100. Okay, so change the 10 to 100. And then I want to construct a 95% confidence interval. So this one is uh, 0 0.95. So 95% confidence interval. Let's see what, what do I get. So calculate. So this one you have a 194. 0.1 and then 205.9 what about the one I when n is equals to 10 what about the one I got uh, in part a just check your notes real quick so that will be a 181.4 181.4 to a 218.6 so to a 218.6 which one is longer so this one uh, the length 218.6 minus that so this is a 37.2 what if you raise the confidence level so 205.9 minus 194.1 so i am using the bigger number minus the smaller number so this one the one with a smaller sample size this one is longer why this you have to check out the formula real quick so the formula is x bar plus or minus z times sigma divided by square root of n right so what we are trying to analyze is what happened if we raise the n now 
just let's make make this simple now tell me 2 divided by 10 versus 2 divided by this which one is bigger the answer is the one with a smaller denominator is bigger so this one is bigger and then this one is smaller because the the other fraction is smaller because the denominator is so big that's why the fraction is small so that means in this problem so if you use a big n then you have a small margin of error because the entire fraction is small then you have a small margin of error then you have a short interval what if you use a small n like part a if you use a small n then you get a big margin of error then you get a long interval so that's how the sample size affects the length of the confidence interval and then regarding the concept of the sample size and the concept of the z value that is true in all types of confidence interval so it doesn't matter what procedure you follow the z the t or the proportion if you raise the sample size you always get a shorter interval if you reduce the sample size you always get a longer interval for the um for the for the z value same thing if you use a higher confidence level then you get a big interval if you use a slower confidence level then you get a shorter interval all right so that will be the end of this video if you think my instruction is helpful let me know in the comment section below as always like the video share the, the video for me subscribe to my channel appreciate your help i see you all in the next lesson Signing out.